This is another episode of the Jesus Beat. I'm Jessica. I'm Tyler. And uh, we're here live. Today is 100 by Annie Mineo and KB. Is that right? Yeah, you're right. KB and Annie Mineo. All right, so we're going to play a song. Uh, we'll play a song. While we wait. While we wait for everybody to log on. And uh, then we'll get to it. Say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Say I won't. We them outsiders. That's just how we live it. Say I won't. And I bet I will. You can say I won't. City is a B.I.G. Wanna serve these bars, got C.I.D. Now I'm on a radar where beat I be. Was a slave for the cars, then we got free. Used to only wanna pull up in a black sport. Just a white man excelling in a black sport. Now I'm really doing pull-ups. Got a honeymoon for the summer, trying to get a six-pack. But say I won't oh catch crazy Slapping in the studio with like three eights in. Autograph that forehead with a Sharpie pen and then Instagram. My swag got a fish back. I might bring the love back. Nobody wanna change the game, man. Okay, say I won't rap over bagpipes. Say I won't talk about that price. To know Christ and live life like a night, my last night. You about to switch up the program. I rock name brand, I rock no brand. My whole life go pro cam. I rap like I had no fans. No, uh, they say you know, I say you don't. They need to be though. And now, but you know, those are my people. All summer rocking this beat though. This that casino. You bet your revenue. Thinking you'll stop me, no, never not letting you. You must be high on that medical. Thinking I won't better know better. Know that I bet. Say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Say I won't. We them outsiders. That's just how we live. Say I won't. And I bet I will. You can say I won't. sell my shoes and take my kids to Chuck E. Cheese with the money. Say I won't bring my own bottle of Pellegrino to the movies with me. Say I won't. Look, I'm from an era of fast living and mass terror. Boys covered in cover girls like mascara. I don't need to keep a gun and a mask ever. I still make them put their hands up. Ask Derek. My road manager damage all of you amateurs sneaking up on a tour bus with a demo to handle us. When I was younger, I just wanted a chain. Now a chain of events has afforded a change. Yeah. See, I've been a rebel since back in the day. I don't follow the people. I follow the leader through valleys, the shadows of death, and I'm fearing no evil. So say I won't do it. Say I won't turn the music up and get to it. Won't come down each time all the way to they time in an old school drop top building. And I'm getting maybe eight or nine miles to the gallon. Still feeling like a stallion. I got Andy riding shotgun with 30 gold chains on. Talking about he Italian. Say I won't go drop a double album and rap double time on all dubstep. And got no producers, just me rocking over beatboxing by Dougie Fresh. Say I won't. Say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Uh, say I won't. We them outsiders. That's just how we live it. Say I won't. And I bet I will. You can say I won't. Why the Jesus beat is um oh by the way we're doing this without our mic this time so if it sounds good let us know and uh we'll just continue like that instead of having all the mess with the wires and stuff um so it sounds good that's good okay so the Jesus beat we're doing 100 it's KB featuring Annie Mineo and we got a little Annie Maneo when we first played too he was in that one and uh yeah that's our thing today and at the end if I have, if we if God willing if there's if there's time there's I know we can make time but uh, I don't want to bore you guys to death or anything but you know to me it's not boring uh we will share some some things about um about giving 
some scriptures about that and, and some teachings about giving. So I think it's really good to, uh, it's something that was put on my heart to, to add to that too. So um, we'll start out with, um, we'll play the song first. Yeah. We'll go over the lyrics. Um, with Bible next to Bible. I mean, Bible next to lyrics. And then we'll get into the giving on, towards the end of that. So that's what we have up for today. You ready? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll listen to KB 100 featuring Annie Mineo. Are you ready? Be Just in case um, you guys weren't here for the KB's bio and the other one, I shortened it up and I'll, I'll run through the KB's bio. Um, uh, it's a little shorter, but it still gets to the point. All right, Kevin Elijah Burgess. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Bur- Burgess or Burgess? Burgess, dally with drugs, gangs fighting, troublemaking, and women. He calls himself a monster of sin. 
um, from the uh, St. Petersburg and Florida's infamous South Side. But the lack of a father undoubtedly contributed to conflicts in his soul, which led him to the verge of getting kicked out of um, college program, among other things. That, that's when he met a Christian who, who introduced him to Christian rap. At that time, KB didn't know much about Christianity, but he thought he knew that God was opposed to rap. The singer on the CD had dreadlocks like Burgess did. He says, I walked with the Lord ever since I got the CD. Burgess says, he got his college degree, began rapping, and caught the eye of the godfather of Christian hip-hop, Lecrae, who quickly signed a talented artist for Reach Records in 2010. One of the pro uh, KB goes and says, one of the profound effects of that Christianity has had on me it's, is, it's made me a fighter, Burgess said. I see Jesus as a fighter. I pull a lot in life from the art and science of boxing. Boxing is a sport of the oppressed. It gives the chance for champions to be born out of darkness, out of the darkest scenarios. People travel from all over the world, all over to see this fight because it speaks to humanity. Everybody knows what a fight is. If you're living, you're fighting. Okay. So that was a quick bio about KB. Uh, I believe he lives in, uh, I forgot where he lives. Anyways, so let's move on. About the song. On 100, KB inspires others to be 100% at anything that you want to do and have passion that honors God through your impact on your impact on influence. The track features Reach Records label mate Annie Maneo. KB says, you don't have to love what you do to love what you do, to do it with love. Brother Lawrence, the author of Practicing the Presence of God, said, God regards not the greatness of, your, of our work, but the love it is done with. So what is there to love? If we do, if what we do provides for people, it is never an insignificant thing. The means of the means by which God provides for His world is through the labor of His people. To do everything unto Him is to work like our lives are not ours but His. He sees what we do and cares how we do it. Therefore, we give our best. It is when it's when we give one hundred. God is honored and this world impacted. That's why this this song, that's what this song is all about. He says, I pray that the music will inspire and ignite a passion in the listener to go all go all out for God in a way they never have before. Okay, so the the we'll get into the lyrics. The hook or quote unquote the chorus, I call it the chorus, the chorus, the hook, is Annie Mineo. He says, yeah, I already know is 100, nothing less. 100 till nothing left. And then he repeats that about four times. Let's see. Okay. So on the hook, when he says, yeah, I all I really know is 100 and nothing less. 100 till nothing left. Both KB and Andy are giving their all for the Lord. Indeed, he is the only one who is worth it. They are working hard and giving nothing less than 100% of themselves to and for him. They are so used to working for God's glory and that they don't need anything else. And that coincides with Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. They're not perfect. Three, Colossians 3 and 23. That was, um, whatever you do, do your work heartily, as for the Lord, rather than for men. We'll get into that, too. There's some there's some lines where we talk about. It says I'm spelling it wrong. It's fine. Press enter. Two S's? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. All right, the first verse is KB. Actually, he's got the other verse. Andy Mineo has the hook. Don't go in there. Stay out of there. Okay, first verse KB says, he's a K to the second letter, mean, meaning like KB. He said, I be feeling like Jackie Robinson, 
rocking the 42 in my Dodger fit, gripping the arm that was just took by a pitch. Crowd, the opposite, saying that I should quit, but I done through all of it. Okay, this is a reference. Yeah, and I got the, I got the info for you. Okay, so he's referring to Jackie Robinson. He's number 42 on the Dodgers. He's the first African-American Major League Baseball player. Being integrated into baseball at a time of extreme racism, he was often hit by pitches to send a message that he didn't belong there and was a victim of crowd, crowd's hate speech. In the first eight yeah, seasons... Yeah, yeah. Don't revive me. Let's see. In the first eight seasons, Robinson led the National League in getting hit yeah, yeah, yeah. by pitches once. Once, hold on. Robinson led the National League in getting hit by pitches once, was second four times and third twice. In fact, in 1951, three of four most often hit National League players were black. Jackie was hit by a total of se- was hit by pitches a total of 72 times during his career. KB is saying that he feels like Jackie Robinson, in that the world is hostile towards believers like him. And also that the world often says he should quit and ditch Jesus for something else. But even the world's opposition won't stop him from giving God 100% of himself. Because the world has been overcome. As Jesus said in John 16, 33. You can write that. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, you, you have tribulation but take courage. I have overcome the world. That's John 16, 33. All right, so we got Pastor Jackie Robinson. Crowd did the opposite, saying that I should quit, but I done through all of it. He said, you can hate, but you can't hurt me. You can hate, but you can't hurt me. In this song, it's clear that KB and Andy are 100% sold out to doing the will of God. The text references 1 Peter 3, 13. Oh, you got that already? Yeah. 1 Peter? Oh, which reads, No one, no, now who is there to harm you? Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? It says, you can hate, but you can't hurt me. Okay? He goes, and my worth is safe, and I can leave this earth today. Gassed up on grace, how are they going to circle K? Okay, if you guys don't know, Circle K is a gas station. There's not a lot of them around anymore. Okay. KB is gassed. Okay. Whoa, calm down. All right. And my worth is safe, and I can leave this world today. Gassed up on grace, how are they going to circle K? Okay, KB is gassed and ecstatic. His salvation is secure through grace. Like a helium gas balloon, this grace gas wrapper will float and leave this earth at some point so others can encircle and surround him, but they can't hold him back. He's also saying he's full of grace, meaning gassed up, and says, how they gonna, how they, how they gonna encircle K? Which is a gas station company. He is full of grace, gassed up, how are they gonna circle K? I mean how are they gonna how are they gonna get around him when he's got so much grace inside him, you know? So it's excellent wordplay. I mean it's 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 really cool. Okay. He said, I don't want no I don't want no new Bugatti, meaning like expensive cars. Put me in Nimba County, Libya, Liberia, I'm serious. Okay, here he's he's talking about KB's bringing attention to the missionary work he's been doing in Liberia. He's really living out what he proclaims in his raps. And may God continue to bless and work through his ministry. Um, let's see. Put me in Nimba County, Liberia. I'm serious. Mosquito net in my Bible. Meaning that's all he had. The mosquito net in his Bible. Concrete bed, I'm still smiling. Okay, on this part, when he says concrete bed, I'm still smiling. He said, while he was in Liberia, he could be on a concrete bed and it wouldn't bother him. Like Paul in Philippians 4, 12, he's learned the secret of being content in, a, in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, 
whether living in plenty or want. So he was okay with sleeping on the on the the concrete bed. He was okay. He was content because he knew what he was there for, and his heart felt content in that area. His heart felt content in what he was doing, and so the concrete bed didn't bother him. So he said, "Concrete, how do you say it? Concrete bed. I'm still smiling." So you know, not a lot of us could say that, but it's pretty amazing that that we can get to that point. You know what I mean? To to have such a a good heart and to say, "I know I'm doing something here, even though if I'm sleeping on." On concrete, and to be quite honest, we've slept on bricks before. Remember? Yep. Yeah. Stone. We've slept. On we've concrete. actually slept on bricks as a family. It wasn't planned, but it, it and it wasn't it wasn't great. But I mean, you know, we weren't out doing the Lord, Lord's work in Libya. But I'm saying, I've, we've experienced sleeping on bricks. It's not fun. But you know, if you got your heart into it and you're doing something and you know it's for the Lord. And your your heart's fully into it, and you're not doing it because somebody else told you to. The the pain or whatever you feel during the night when you're sleeping on that kind of stuff kind of just goes away. You know what I mean? You see the bigger picture, and you know. Hey, concrete bed, man. I bricks. We've slept on bricks before. I'm not. I am not kidding you. You know. You know. Maybe next time if we sleep on bricks, we're doing the Lord's work. It's better better be that than he'd give us peace yeah. while we're sleeping, you know? Huh. <laughs> it is not fun. <laughs> okay. But, you know, my heart can change. Maybe sleeping on bricks would be okay if I was helping, you know, something or, you know, doing something. Maybe I was doing the Lord work at that time, but I just didn't see it. Who knows? You know what I mean? I don't know. So, we'll see, you know? But he was still smiling. That's what matters. Okay. Ain't eating, ain't eating much, but I'm still smiling. I'd rather be in the jungle and in the will of God than anywhere else outside it. Now this, this always sticks out to me when I, when I listen to it. He says, I'd rather be in the jungle and in the will of God than anywhere else outside it. So if I had a chance to be outside the will of God, but yet in a palace or a mansion or the Hamptons, I'd still rather be in the jungle barefoot hungry as long as i'm in the will of god you know what i mean because we we want to be in the will of god because god's going to lead us to every good thing you know we're all going to go through things and stuff like that but we want to be in the will of god in in everything that we do you know what i mean just keep walking that path and keep walking that that direction you know even if it's in the jungle as long as it's in the will of god you know what i mean then anywhere else outside it he says boy I'm about, boy, I'm about it. Meaning, I'm, I'm about it. I'm in this life, but hope ain't in this life. So where's the hope? He says, in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Okay. So, uh, if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are all, uh, we're all men most to be pitied. So what KB is saying is, he hopes in eternity that the... Uh, he hopes in eternity, the afterlife that he will spend with Jesus. So he's saying, my hope ain't in this life. Our hope is in Christ. And that's what, that's what he's getting here. But my hope ain't in this life. My hope is in Christ. A good career, book for years. I book them peers. A good look just won't suffice. But homie, my life is hidden in Christ. My life is hidden in Christ. Okay, the idea of being hidden in Christ comes from Colossians 3.3. 3. I didn't even highlight, highlight it, Mira. That says, for you died and your life is now hidden in Christ, in God. What this means is that we, are, we belong to Christ and, we, and being inside of Him is our security. Nothing can pluck us up from His hand, which is John 10.28. We are... His sacred gem, or as Peter puts it, his living stones. We are precious to God. That's First Peter 2, 4 through 5. And by KB saying that, that he is implying that Christ God will protect him and keep him, for his, for his life is precious to God based on what Christ did on the cross. So he's saying, I'm not precious because of, because of what I've done. I'm not precious because of exactly who I am or what my name is or because I'm famous I'm precious because 
Christ died for me. The Son came for me. His His blood washes my sins. I'm precious in God's eyes. You know what I mean? Sometimes people don't see their self worth until they see how worth, how much they are loved by God. It's how much you are loved by God. You are loved by God with an unconditional love that we can never buy. We can never get in this. We can even get that kind of love in this world. You know? And some people just don't see their self-worth yet until they see it through the eyes of God. Until they, they read the scripture and they're like, wow, God loves me so much that he sent his son to die for me. You know what I mean? And you are you are worth it. Whether you like it or not, you you are worth it. You know, and you are worth to You are worth You are... What did I study today? What's that word? You're a God's inheritance. That's what I studied today. Francis Chan taught me that today. You're a God's inheritance. He's waiting for you. You know, he loves you. This, his main purpose is to love you. You were made to love God. Our hearts are made to love God. And when we don't love God, we don't have God in our life, in our heart. We have that emptiness inside and we fill it up with other things. So yes, we are made for God. We're made for God's love. And and he we are in his inheritance, you know, and we have the we have the choice of saying we love God or we don't love God. But I'm telling you, you're full, you're gonna feel more complete. You're gonna be on the right path when you give your life to the Lord. You know what I mean? And that's 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 something that money can't buy, time can't buy, anything like that. God gives, and He gives. He's a good giver. You know what I mean? And that's something that we never earn. And he just gave it to us because he loves us. See, that's a loving and caring father. Let's see. All right. Where are we at? Okay. He says, "But homie, my life is hidden in Christ. My life is hid. My life is hidden in Christ. My life is hidden in Christ. Give me ninety-nine problems plus one Godhead." The result is, and he goes, 100. Okay, so give me 99 problems of one Godhead. This is a play on the words from Jay-Z's 99 problem song. Here, instead of looking at all his individual 99 problems, he simply just says that his God is bigger and better than his 99% per problems, present problems. And if he gives it to God, it's all good. So instead of sitting there saying, I got 99 problems and something ain't one. He says, I got 99 problems present. Give me one Godhead and I ain't got none. You know what I mean? So he's flipping the wordplay right there. Okay, so we get into the hook again, which is Annie Mineo. He says, oh, yeah, I already know. All I really know is 100, nothing less. 100 till nothing left, meaning like till death. You know, and that, that that's, that's, that's a lot. You know what I mean? You got to mean it. You're going to say it. You're going to mean it from the heart. You know what I mean? Okay. Verse 2. It's KB. He says, Okay, our God's never failing. Okay, so our God's never failing. So our God never fails. Our God never fails. He's perfect and he'll never, mis mis never make a mistake. So believe that. Y'all need to be quiet. For real. You hear me? Be quiet. Shh. Shh. Okay. Our God never fails. He's perfect and he'll never make a mistake. Believe that. Okay. In Le Lamentations 3.22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion, his compassions never fail. So our God never fails us. In Joshua twenty one forty five it says, Not one of all not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. So God never breaks his promises. Remember that? We said that a couple times in the past episodes. God doesn't break promises, but he breaks chains. Jesus is a chain breaker. Okay? So God never breaks promises. Never failing. Alright. So there's ain't nothing, he goes on to say, ain't nothing you can't tell him. There's, there, there's nothing you can't tell God that he don't already know. Because he's in and of everything in this world. Like he is, uh, how do you say it? Omniscient. He knows everything. Okay? 
since God is omniscient, meaning he's, he's everywhere and everywhere at the same time, hearing everything, seeing everything, there's nothing you can tell him that he doesn't already know. Likewise, you won't be able to pull any excuses or lies as he sees right through them. It reminds me of when God humbled Job, when Job tried to question God. And after spending two chapters questioning Job and showing his own lack of knowledge in comparison to God, look at what is written. Okay, this is Job 40, 1 through 5. Then the Lord said to Job, Do you still want to argue with the Almighty? You're a God's critic, but do you have the answers? Then Job responds, Job responds to the Lord. Job replied to the Lord, I am nothing. How could I ever find the answers? I will cover my mouth with my hand. I have said too much already. I have nothing more to say. So, there ain't nothing you can't tell him. Because he, he's everywhere and everything. He's in everything. He's in everything. He can hear everything. And he's everywhere at every time. So, he's around all the time. And hears everything all the time. So, there's nothing that, that we can come to God with that he doesn't know already. You know what I mean? So, that should make you feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that when it comes to confessing your sins... And, uh, and talking about and talking about things that you need to talk about with God that he knows he's seen it you know but you confessing it and talking about him and, and talking with God about your problems or about different aspects in your life or what's going on or things that worry you that's that's your relationship you know you have that free range relationship of communication because of what Jesus Christ has done for you you know what I mean and we wouldn't have that that one-on-one -on -one without having the advocate we wouldn't have that that be able to talk to god without jesus jesus is our mediator he's our advocate he's the one that's in between that because of what jesus came and done you know crucified uh went to the tomb um rose on the third day sits at the right hand of the father because of everything he done in the physical realm and the spiritual realm we are able to talk to god and communicate through the lord you know what i mean so it's only because of Jesus that we're able to even pray and that our prayers are being heard because of what Jesus has done. But God sent Jesus. You see, what, you see what I'm saying? But there had to be justice for the sins, you know, Adam and Eve, indwelling sin, things like that, okay? What I'm saying is that we have that one-on-one -on -one communication now where we know that we, can, we are heard because of what Jesus has done for us. So he's our mediator. He's our advocate, okay? So we're not heard because of anything... We're not heard by God because of anything that we've done or accomplished or achieved. We're heard by God. Our prayers are heard by God because of what Jesus has done for us. And he goes on our behalf and says, these, these are their prayers, you know. And it's like sweet smelling incense to him. So we have that privilege to pray. And I, I encourage you guys to pray. To pray about anything. If, uh, and give thanks and give praise to God for each and everything that you everything that you want to um is, is the bible says to rejoice in him always so rejoice in the lord in your good times rejoice in the lord in your bad times rejoice in the lord in the hard times rejoice in the lord in the times that you have to persevere and um just just keep going forward you know and we just i just want to thank the lord that we have that that communication with god that we're able to just get on our knees and say you know lord help me with this or that and bring our cares and our burdens to him and um that's what's good that that he's there and he's listening there's nothing that he hasn't seen or or not heard that's not going to be new to him so we come with him with our prayers with our burdens with our uh worries and stuff like that so there ain't nothing you can't tell him okay yeah he goes yeah he's that generous type but you can but you face him you will take that l in Okay, this is what's happening right here. It's, it's wordplay again, okay? Yes, he's God. That the generous, degenerous, making a little stab at Ellen, I guess, type. But you face him, you will take that L in. Meaning the loss, but, he, but it sounds like Ellen, like Ellen degenerous. Yeah, he's God. The generous, degenerous type. But you face him, you will take that L in. Do you, do you hear it? Do you hear the L in, degenerous? Okay, get it? God is merciful and loving. But at the same time, he is all-powerful. And he does control whether or not you go to heaven or hell. The Lord don't play no games. Okay. 
No, our God won't fail us. That's the next line. Then David said to his son Solomon. This is First uh, Chronicles 28, 20. Then David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and courageous and act. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you nor, fors- nor forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. That's First Chronicles 28, 20. So no, our God won't fail us. We know from where our help comes. We know from where our help comes, he says. This is from Psalms 121.1. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And that's, that's, that speaks. Your help. You can say, oh, yeah, you know, so-and-so helps me. Or, uh, yeah, the governor was helping me with something. But man, my help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. To 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 be in that that just that mind frame, just that my help. Well, you know, you got your help here, your help there, and that's great, you know. But my help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. Now, to to actually say that to someone, to actually like say it wholeheartedly, believing that believing it when it comes out of your mouth. That that's it's so I can't even think of the word it's so profound you know there's so much faith and there's so much like like the the gospel wrapped into them my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth it's like okay you have your help and I have my help but just know that my help comes from the Lord who's the maker of heaven and earth you know that's wow not not to be boastful but it's, it's it's amazing you know what I mean to know that we have a helper, you know, who made heaven and earth and all the galaxies. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, ah, uh, I just can't even, it's, it's, you know, we ask for help for a lot of things, you know, here and there for, hey, help me take out the trash or, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> hey, help me take this mattress out of my house, you know, with your truck or whatever. But for someone to say, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's, you're putting your faith in action, you know? You don't see it, but you know it's going to happen. You know that you have help from somewhere, and that's from the Lord. See? Walk by faith, not by sight. All right. So I put my life at stake. Though it may be blood, I want that well done. Stake. Okay, some more wordplay, okay? So I put my life at stake. He writes S-T-A-K-E. But it could mean S-T-E-A-K, like the meat steak. Though it might be blood, I want that well done. He says you could choose whether or not you want your steak rare, medium, or well done. KB is saying that while living for Christ, he will face persecution, death threats, and there might even be blood. But after everything is finished, he wants to hear the Lord say, well done. Just like a steak. (laughs) It's pretty cool the wordplay there. Steak. He said, so I put my life at stake. Though it might be blood, I want that well done. Meaning like, even if there's blood between now and the time I I meet Jesus, the time I see Jesus, or I, I go to Abraham's bosom. You can choose whether or not you want your steak rare, medium, or well done. So while living for Christ, he will face persecution, death threats, and there might even be blood from here until the time our end of the life comes, our, our, our end it comes. But when he's done, all he wants to hear is, well done, like the steak. But at the same time, it comes from Matthew 25, 21, where it says, his master replied, well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful with a few things i will put you in charge of many things come and share your master's happiness so he's saying at at the end of my line when i meet my maker i want want him to tell me well done so that's what he's saying but he used the wordplay of the steak too the steak was well done so it was really cool with the the way he did that he said if we flipping burgers we flipping houses If, if we flipping burgers or 
if we're flipping houses man our bank accounts don't mean nothing and if we paid a lot or we or we paid a bit we're gonna be we gonna be going in because he's coming we're trying to be the best that we can be and rest so that the world can see that he's done it okay no matter who cuts the check or where we work at man we work for him and we love it okay so matter don't ma no matter who cuts the check or where we're working at man we work for him and we love it the moral of his story is do your work with all your heart as to the lord and this is from colossians 3 22 through 25 slaves in all things obey those who are your masters on earth not with the external service as those who are merely pleased men who's or as those who merely please men but with sincerity of heart fearing the lord whatever you do do your work heartily as for the lord rather than for men knowing that from the lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance it is the lord christ whom you serve for the who for who does wrong will receive the consequences of the wrong which he has done and that will and, and that without partiality so i said it doesn't matter if you work at mcdonald's it doesn't matter if you're a ceo if you're a janitor if you're a boxing trainer if you work for sensi if you're a mary Kay specialist if you do avon if you're uh, a, a a trader on the on the wall street or whatever it's called what matters is not who cuts your checks what matters is that we do it do your work with all your with all your heart as it, to the lord so we put our heart heart into it because we have the lord in us because we have grateful hearts that's where it's coming from so it don't matter who cuts your checks don't let anybody put you down about where you where you work or where you uh you get your money from you know as long as you're not killing people or anything like that or selling drugs you know but as far as working, you know, it don't matter who cuts your checks. You work, you work for the Lord. Plain and simple. And then it goes into the hook with Annie Mineo. He still says, yeah, all I really know is 100, nothing less. And this is thing. I think it's, I really like that this, they say it like that. They don't just, they don't know 50, 60%. They don't know 80%. He says, all I really know is 100 and nothing less. 100 till nothing left he didn't give no room for you to say oh i'm gonna be half fast i'm gonna give it 50 i'm gonna give it 80 today you know i ain't gonna give my all well then you ain't you ain't realize that you just don't work for mcdonald's you work for the lord too you know what i mean or you work for uh you know pdc or you work for uh, the city you know what i mean you don't just work for those places you work for the lord too you're wherever you work right now or if you stay home wherever you're working right now god has put you there so that you could be a witness to the other people there you know what i mean we're all we all have our own walk we all have our own trials we all have our own specialty in who we can talk to and who we can reach you know what i mean we all earn the respect of someone's ear we all can't earn the same respect of someone's ear of someone else but God will put pe people on our lives who we're going to um, influence, but not in a bad way, but influence them to see God, to see Jesus. You know what I mean? To be that light. And we're going to be put in those situations. And a lot, uh, some, uh, most of the time, you're put at your job for a reason, to be that light. To be the, the person who's, you know, the, the light in the cave. So the cave's all dark and then just only one light. If you have... A match in a cave a very dark cave and you light one match that match can be seen throughout the whole cave because it's the one light in the darkness and what I'm saying is that we don't just work for ourselves we don't just work for our families we work for the Lord also so we get 100 and everything because we know that God is not only watching us but he's everywhere and anywhere so we give it 100 because first of all we got to be thankful we have a job we got to be thankful we're alive that every breath in our lung is a gift from God you know as long as I'm breathing he's having mercy on me you know what I mean and 
we're putting we're putting certain situations we're put we're we're put in different environments we're all put in different environments to to bring the gospel to reflect god's love you know and that's 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 our walk everybody has our own walk we all have our own walk and you know thank the lord for that that we're all special in our own way and god made us to be like that but all I already know is 100 nothing less you, you know he's saying i don't know nothing less than 100 i can't give 80 i don't know what 80 is i don't know what 50 is all i really know is 100 and if you say that enough you start giving 100 all the time you know if you start what we're going to talk about in a little bit you're going to say you know what all i really know is 100 too i'm gonna give my 100 no matter what don't matter who cuts a check give my 100 because i'm not just working for myself i'm working for the lord too because the lord gave me this job the lord gave me my bread so i'm gonna work for the lord you know what i mean don't matter who cut the checks okay in the outro which is kb also he says i just want to hear that well done my faithful servant he's paraphrasing matthew 25 21 again he's saying that jesus told he is saying that like jesus told his disciples at the end of his life well done my faithful servant that when he arrives at heaven that jesus would look at him and, and like he was an apostle of his so he wants him to say with welcome mar and say well done my faithful servant that's what he says that's what he he's he's i just want to hear that he says well done my faithful servant a life full of pushback at that moment will be all be worth it meaning lord we're gonna have trials the bible tells us we're gonna have trials we're gonna have tribulation you know but he's always gonna be with us no matter what so a life full of pushback at that moment will all be worth it so when he tells you when you go to heaven you say well done my faithful servant just hearing that well done it'll all be worth it let's see because my work is worship worship is important if you find yourself and you have some time for yourself take that time and worship god you know sing a song you know you know pray lift up your hands let everything go and and just sing a song you know i encourage you guys to to sing to sing while you're washing dishes to sing in the car if you can glorify god in at save mart or at the store or um while you're making something you're filling waters man whatever it is if you take that time especially now since uh, a lot of things aren't open and stuff you take that extra time that you got and you just sing a song so praise and, and just like worship god in that song and just saying it with your heart i i encourage you guys to do that because work is our work is my work is worship we should worship him you know and i know a lot of people are not getting that worship because um churches are closed but you gotta you gotta see that this way we are the church he is the head we are the body we gotta realize we we are the church we strive forward no matter what if there's no building we are the building you know what i mean we got to keep striving forward we got to say you know what i'm gonna praise you god in the storm out of the storm and don't i don't have to have a roof over my head i could praise you out in the wilderness i could praise you next to this tree i could praise you next to my washer i could praise you in the shower you could praise him wherever you want because he's there with you anyways you might as well praise him with your mouth because we need all those good things to be coming out of our mouth we might as well praise him you know we give him praise and not only that, when we praise him, there's a lot of things happening in the spiritual realm that are breaking. And the demons and all the bad spirits and all the cohorts of hell, they don't like it. They don't like praise and worship. So give your all to God when you praise him. When you when you sing, just sing. Even if it's just once a day, man, if you could fit in more than that, that's great. But I'm urging you, man, just like, just, you know, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Something, you know what I mean? Anything, you know, like... Uh, an old hymn or maybe a song your mom or grandma taught you or something like that just praise him praise him wherever you find time because he's worthy to be praised first and foremost the one who made heaven and earth the one who's my helper he's my helper why can't i praise the one who helps me who made heaven and earth so i'm gonna praise him 
whether they like it or not. Praise them here. I'll praise them at the store. I'll praise them in the car. I'll praise them on the res. I'll praise them in the backyard, in the front yard. I'll praise them in the kids' room when they're sleeping. Hey. <laughs> I'm all shaking them. <laughs> what really matters is, he says, because my work is worship. We can give thanks. We can rejoice in him always. But we can also praise him. Praise him with our mouth. Make a joyful, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. There it is. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It don't mean that you have to be a perfect singer. Singer, you don't have to be Mariah Carey. You can hit the high notes, and nobody's nobody's gonna make fun of you. And you know what? You know who also is hearing too. God's hearing. The Lord Jesus is hearing. But the angels are hearing too, and they adore. I don't. I don't want to say this wrong. The fact that we give our time and our heart over to God. And we've never seen him before. The angels have seen seen Jesus. They've seen God. But we've never seen him in the flesh. We've never seen him like, like actually seen them with our eyes. We do this all on faith. We do, we praise, we worship, we pray. All on faith. Because we've never seen. So how do we know for sure? Everything's based on faith. And they, they like adore. They marvel is actually the real word. They marvel at the fact that we adore something that we've never seen before. But we know we're saved. We know we have salvation. We know we're loved by God. We know we're in His, we're in His inheritance by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And, they, and the angels marvel at that. That we put that time aside to praise, to worship Him, to, to learn the Word. you know. And they marvel at that. So it's amazing. So make a joyful noise unto the Lord worship him if you make time to do it whenever you can i just i just want to encourage you guys that today okay okay and when he comes back for his church all over the earth we'll be given no less but than when he gave us first 100 before adam sinned earth was perfect because god created it then he and eve disobeyed god obviously and the earth became sinful. Eventually, after Jesus comes back, his second coming, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. In Revelation 21, 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So the earth will be perfect again, perfect again, and it will be as it was in the first, when it was first given to us. But this time it will stay that way. Let's see, 7.53. Okay. Okay, so I got a little extra for you guys today. Um, the Bible has so many numerous scriptures about giving. And I thought that, I felt that giving and talking about giving your 100 and giving in general kind of coincide with each other. And um, so I want to speak on giving, about us giving our 100 and why we give our 100. So speaking on giving our 100 to the Lord and what all and what we do is all for His glory. So remember, remember when we said, "Don't matter who cut the checks, we work for Him." What we do is all for the glory of the Lord. Okay. So why do we give as Christians? I mean, why not give 50? Why not even maybe 80? You guys probably already know already because we touched on it already. Isn't isn't 80 enough? Why not give 80? Right? That's a pretty decent number. So why 100? What is the purpose of giving? It should be no surprise that the answer is simple and not complex. It's not complex uh, all at the same time. For many of us, it's really tempting to point and look at the needs of the world and say, that's why I give. We're giving so we can bless others. And me, personally, I do hear this one a lot. I do. Okay. And th this is good motivation but it's biblically not the starting place for god's people we also have to remember that generosity it's about so much more than money it's about our entire lives giving our time talent and our treasure you know i i learned something in bible study and uh i was talking about giving our time and our talent and our treasure and uh we uh, talked about tithing baloney you know what i mean it's like it, I, 
a lot of times I don't have money to give to, for my ties. But my cousin showed me, Steve showed me that, you know, when I when I make food for people or I sit down and listen to people and I, I give them my, my time or I give them f food from my fridge that I made, that's, that's tithing also. And I never seen it that way until he showed me. You know what I mean? And I thank the Lord for that because I always thought it was about money. You know what I mean? I, I, hey, if the Lord wants that, then hey, you know, what am I to, to do to go against that? You know what I'm saying? But it's not about that. And what I, what I what I've researched and what I've read is that it's not it's more than it's more than about money, you know, because God sees our heart, you know, it's about our entire lives, giving our time, our talent, and our treasure. So if I'm I'm talented at making sandwiches for Bible study, and I don't ask anything for return, and I'm just compelled to bring something, that's on me, you know what I mean? If I do it out of my own heart, you know what I mean? And maybe that's like a tithe. Maybe it is, you know? I'm giving to the Lord, you know what I mean? I don't want to do it because I want people to say, oh, you're such a nice person. No, I just want to do it just because I want to do it. Because, you know, I have a grateful heart, you know what I mean? And if, especially if I, I have extra and I see, I'm going to give. Because I know, I know the Lord will provide on my end too, you know what I mean? And I'm not asking for blessings. The blessings come when the blessings come. We don't ask, we don't say, oh, I'm doing this, let the Lord bless me. Because that's not biblical. We do it because we have a grateful heart. Okay? We don't ask for anything else in return. Okay? So giving our time, talent, and treasure, and your baloney. <laughs> so we tell our, our, our tithing baloney, you know what I mean? But um, it can be your food too. You pay for the food, right? So it can be your food too. You tithe it to people, meaning like, you're giving, you know, but you give from your heart. It always has to be the heart. You can't give from compelment. Like you can't give because you feel bad or you see somebody else giving something and you're like, oh, well, I should do it too. Because the Lord knows that's not from your heart. It's not right. So, and if it's, that's the case, our giving has to be motivated by something far greater. So why does the, what does the Bible say about why we give? Acts 2 helps us understand our primary motivation. Here Luke describes the believers as having, this is Acts 2, 44 through 47. All things in common. So the believers are, okay, the believers have all things in common and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing their, their proceeds to all as any, had, as any had need. And day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They received their food and glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved okay that's incredible right so strong was the bond between the early Christians that they had great desire to meet one another's needs so if I need something let's say I need a tent and Tyler's next door and I said hey do you have a tent and he's like yeah yeah here yeah yeah go ahead and take it like no hesitation you know what just keep it you know that's how it was back then you know what you need beans i have beans you know what take the crock pot too i have to just take the crock pot with the beans take the whole thing the whole shebang you can have it <clears throat> nothing was off limits homes and lives were open despite what some what some who perhaps hold a more creative view of possessions might suggest meaning like some people view possessions as um a sinful thing not just there's a line drawn somewhere you know what I mean so we'll get that's another thing but personal property was not seen as wicked or sinful in the early church indeed even during this time many believers continued to own their own homes where they would meet and that was in uh, Acts 2 verse 46 now in Acts 5 4 it indicates that Christians were under no obligation to relieve themselves of all their earthly possessions so there was never any rules say Oh, if you want to follow God, you have to give up everything and, and give everything you have to the poor. There's, there's no rules. There's no regulations. There's no scripture for that. Okay? They were, no, they were under no obligation to relieve themselves of their earthly possessions. Okay? So what compelled them to give this to What compelled them to say, you know what? I don't want none of this. I don't need it. It's not so much I don't want it. It's much, you know, I feel like I don't need this anymore. I'm going to give to people who do need it. Okay? So what compelled them? 
This was motivated by the grace of God. It was spontaneous. It was a spontaneous response to God's lavish generosity toward them in not holding back the most precious treasure of all, free and unmerited salvation offered by the Father through Christ. What's fascinating is that this is the pattern throughout the whole Bible. God's grace motivates generosity in his people for the purpose of glorifying God. In the Old Testament, Genesis 14, 19 through 20, Abraham gives Melchizedek a tithe, a tenth of his spoils. But there's no command to do so. It's motivated by Abram's love for God and his conviction that Melchizedek is God's special servant. Also in Exodus 25.2, there was plans made for the construction of the tabernacle. God says, For every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive a contribution for me. Moses then tells the Israelites um, in Exodus 35, 5, and then 36 and 5 through 7, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution. When the people returned, they had, been, they had to be restrained from giving, as what they offered was far beyond what was needed. Now, can you imagine? Someone says, you need to stop giving. That's, you need to just stop. The Israelites had to be restrained from giving, as what they offered was far beyond what was needed. It's the heart. Okay? As we turn to the New Testament, this pattern continues to become and becomes more overt. In 2 Corinthians, which contains the most exhaustive construction on New Covenant giving, we read similar generous offerings. In 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 12, there Paul commends the Macedonians to the Corinthians, saying that they were in serious affliction and extreme poverty, but they gave an overflow of generosity according to their means. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Um, continuing on, it says, uh, this is 2 Corinthians 9, 6-12. You will be enriched in every way for all your generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is it also overflowing in many thanksgiving to God. So you give, when you give in generosity, it's also being thankful. In, it's in thanksgiving to what God has done for you. So Paul is laying out a number of straightforward principles that should guide how we give. Give generously, give cheerfully. Give according to what you decided in your heart and give thankfully. Giving out a sense of guilt or external pressure isn't generosity, it's extortion. And God will have none of it. Guilt doesn't glorify God. Paul says in essence, all of our giving is to be from a generous heart, cheerfully offered, guilt and obligation don't produce this kind of heart but the holy spirit does grace produces grace from jesus christ the love of the father grace produces generosity as men and women are reminded of the gospel that jesus through though he was rich became poor on our behalf lived a sinless life died on the cross offering up his life for ours and rose again to give us the, the gift of a new life. That's the kind of attitude toward giving that glorifies God. That's the purpose to which we are called as cheerful givers and truly there is no better no motivation. So why do we give 100? Because that's what God gave us. He gave us his 100. So we should give our 100. And know nothing less. Alright? Um, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope I, I, I read the word of God reached you guys. You know what? We didn't even pray before we started. I'm sorry. 
Heavenly Father, bless these words that went out today, Father. Bless everyone here. Everyone that was uh, a part of this, Father, I just bless them. Father, in the name of Jesus, just bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. Um, we plead the blood of Jesus over our city, our state, um, our government, the United States, Father, over ourselves, our homes, our vehicles, Father. And um, if there's any ailments or pain or sickness in us, Father, we claim ourselves healed by His stripe. We are healed, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We claim it in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that needs to be plucked up from the roots and cast into the sea, we pluck it up in Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you, praise you. Anything that's hurting you right now, we just come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. We claim you healed, 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 healed in Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you, Father, for, for blessing the people that are listening, blessing us here, Father. Father, we know that two, where two or more are gathered, you are in the midst. We just thank you for that, Father. We thank you for this time, this fellowship, Father. And we thank you that more people will be finding time to praise and worship you, Father, to find that time to to sing a song to you, Father, to, to give you praise, to give you thanks and rejoice in you always, Father, in the good times and the bad times and the persevering times and, and all the times when the rubber meets the road that we persevere, that we find time to rejoice in you always and to make a joyful noise unto you, Father. We just thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood covering over our sins, Father, and that we are, and that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. As he is, so am I in this world. By his stripes I am healed. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. As he is, so am I in this world. And perfect love casts out fear. We just thank you, Father, and praise you for a long life that will glorify you, Father, and to always be in your will. And we will try our best to always give our 100 because you gave us your 100. And we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we thank you for being here with us for another episode of Jesus Beat. Um, I encourage you to get in some good Christian hip-hop music. Uh, good Christian music anyways. And um, and remember to keep the good stuff flowing. Man. Always seek the Word of God every day. God gives us, um, God gives us enough, enough grace for each day. So seek Him every day. And we just thank you for being here. And um, we just want to help encourage you, you know. To see the good and everything you see see through God's eyes. You know what I mean? And um, God bless you guys. We thank you for being here. And remember to give it your 100. God's with you. He's the fourth man in the fire. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves everything about you. And um, I just thank the Lord for you guys. And I, I thank you, the Lord, for having given us this time together. And uh, I just encourage you guys to um, continue rejoicing Him always, you know. And uh, I thank you. You guys have a great week. We'll see you again next week. And um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for being here with us. God bless you guys, okay? We love you.